Hello, hello, and good day, everyone. Welcome to Dragon Age Gates Quest Tutorial, Episode 76, Part 3. Yeah, I was definitely not keen on making this a uh, Part 3 to Episode 76, but I really didn't have any other choice. So before we begin, I just want to say that ep this was supposed to be an Episode 77, Part 2, because I thought you needed to use a Rin Dash in order to... Uh, Perform the glitch I'm about to show you guys. Uh, and part two is all about the Rin Dash. And you didn't need to use a Rin Dash to perform what I'm about to show you guys. So, and uh, top it all off, this and the other glitches I'm about to show you guys is closer to episode 76 than it is to episode 77. So I thought, okay, then I'll just move it down to part one, make a note of, of it being closer to episode 76, uh, and then just go ahead and showcase, uh, given that part one is just showcasing some other glitches you can do in Serdana before the, uh, talking about the Rin Dash in part two. But then the video was nearing 35 to 40 minutes, and I, it was going to shoot past that. And I tried slimming down as much as I could, uh, but I couldn't slim down any further. So it's like, no, I can't. I just simply cannot let it slide to make a video that long. At least, as I said before, um, I don't want to make my videos uh, longer than 30 minutes if I can help it for the glitch tutorial. So, what what is my option then? Well, since I haven't aired episode 77 yet, why not just make an episode 76 part three? Not my first choice, given that I don't really like splitting things into parts. I would love for everything to be cleanly as episode this, this, and this. No parts. But bakers can't be choosers here. And so, here we are in episode 76, part 3, everyone. Let's get started. Alright, to start things off, we got to access the floorboards here. In order to do that, I thought you had to do the Rin Dash in order to actually access this. But that's not the case. What you need to do to access it is just simply strafing. Or m walking backwards. Walking forwards will pop you back up. However, there is a chance that if Rin, as Rin would pop up, she can fall back down. And if you tap the control stick forward before the animation of her landing ends you can actually run underneath the floorboards. But again, that's only if she falls back through the floor. You can also use this chest here to actually uh, get Ren to uh, perform this action. At least easier or more on command. Of course, try not to get stuck. Now, I don't know what makes strafing and walking backwards so unique and different to what running forward does, or even just walking forward. Um, but this will be important to know in regards to episode 77 part 2 when we talk about the Ren Dash as an application thereof will help you be able to use the glitch for longer periods of times whenever you come across any walls or trees or any obstacles that would potentially interrupt the Ren Dash, but more so we will discuss that in episode 77 part 2. I just want you guys to remember knowing that walking backwards and strafing behave differently from going forwards. It is important to note, however, if you have freshly come to Serdana from either a gate or, or I believe like another location like Cragmore or such like that, you may encounter this problem here in which Rather, regardless if you strafe or walk backwards, Ren will pop up above the floorboards. To resolve this issue, however, is to just simply save the game and then load back. Yes, uh, saving the game and then loading back if you're encountering this problem will resolve the issue. <laughs> but it will not resolve the issue of Arak's incessant inability to find a good landing spot. But the reason why I'm uh, kind of obsessing over the floorboards here is to actually access Sir Donna's underworld through the villager's house and his basement. So, 
what we would normally would do was like basically we have this here and we would straight to the right and fall down as we did in episode 76 part 2. However, this would just have Ren pop up in the slope, but we can just simply jump out from it. So in order to actually access Sardana's underworld from here is to strafe into the floorboards. Then we strafe towards the entrance and we can have Ren fall down. We're going to tilt the torsic back to have her ascend down faster. We're going to have her descend down a little bit here. Three, two, one. Press and hold X. Okay. Now we have access to Sardana's underworld from the villager's basement. And just listen to that. This is how I got the raw audio uh, file of the villager's basement without the torch sound effects. So what we can do here, we can either go this way to explore Sardana's underworld, uh, Sardana's underworld from uh, the villager's house, or we can just roll this way and we can let go of X and we can access the villager's basement when it's all sealed up. Of course, we can just use the phantom rolling glitch to access the seal basement instead, which is a lot easier. But hey, now you know two ways to access the seal basement. But speaking of the uh, seal basement, there's nothing really different about it. Uh, uh, aside from there being a wall in the way of the entrance now. But comedically speaking, this is probably what the villager would actually had to end up doing if we were given the option to refuse him to seal off the basement. Because if if the guards weren't going to do anything and we were his only, his last hope of actually dealing with the spiders immediately, he would basically have to seal off the basement and basically starve the spiders out. Maybe one to two years, maybe even a little bit more. And then take down the wall and then dispose of the spiders' corpses once and when they're all dead. It's... <laughs> It's funny when you think about it like that. It's that we could have refused him and uh, he would have to seal off the basement. Uh, another villager that's definitely not satisfied with how Sardana is currently doing things. Now to get out of here, we can either use this location, perform a Who turn, and then perform some sideways tunnel flips into the ground to then cause Ren to do a phantom rolling glitch. Of course, we can also use the barrels over here if you haven't destroyed them yet. Jump up to here, perform a who turn with counter and not attack because we don't want to break them. And then we can perform our sideways tunnel flips down into the ground and then roll out of here for a phantom rolling glitch. Of course, we can just go ahead and leave out of here like this, but there is something rather fun that we can do, which is we're gonna go out to this hidden area over here. Using this hidden area, we are going to turn this area invisible. Now, normally, when you turn something invisible, it goes away. But in this location, with some little meandering a little bit here and there, because uh, usually it'll just turn back like this. However, if we can turn it invisible like this and leave out of here while it's still invisible, we can explore the basement while it's all invisible and I have no idea how um, uh, if spiders if they would turn invisible or whatnot and you'll be facing invisible enemies which I can imagine that'll be a bit challenging in um, the early uh, uh, playthrough of Dragon Needs of Gates which I will be sure to try that on my other playthrough but we can actually explore through here uh, and just be able to explore this area as per normal, but it's just invisible. And so all you got is uh, just the wherewithal of the map in your own mind, how to navigate through here and out of here. Now, of course, if you want to return the map to normal, all you got to do is head back to the entrance, enter these stairs, and the basement will return. Another thing you can do is to leave the villager's basement with the audio. So leave outside of here and keep the audio of the basement. To do this, you can either do what I did earlier, get down 
into Sardana's underworld, roll out towards Sardana, and then pop up. Or we can use a phantom rolling glitch and then access into here to then access this hidden area to then uh, use this side here. We should be able to pop up onto the mountain slopes here. Let's see if I can get one to trigger. There we go. And then we are out of here with uh, the audio soundtrack of the villager's basement. Now, I would have loved this soundtrack. I would have loved it absolutely to use when doing the nighttime at Sardana uh, glitch uh, as to kind of give it a more of a... I don't know, it just it would fit a whole lot better than what the normal audio track that would play for Sardana. But sadly, once when you leave out of the vicinity of the villager's basement with the audio, it will loop every 10 seconds. So once when you get to a certain point, it will start looping every 10 seconds. And you're stuck with it. You don't need to yell. Yeah, it's kind of really underwhelming. Like, it's going to be playing this portion. And it depends on where, you, when you leave out of the basement, as to what portion of the villager's basement theme will play. But then it would just keep on playing and playing. Now, we've done this before with getting the audio uh, of, the, uh, of the mushroom caves. And the audio uh, of the monk's chant over at the Brotherhood of the Eternal World and leaving outside of there with it. But if you want to turn this off, you can just go around to the different locations where you can have a battle theme. Much like either Cragmore, uh, going to visit Casa Vol, or you can just simply go over to the Val towards the Valley of the Fallen and the battle theme will kick in and then you can head back to Sardana, returning everything back to normal. All right, there's a couple of other things before we move on from here, is that when doing the infinite fall glitch, we can't do it going backwards because the camera will pan out. You gotta have the camera out in order to actually get close enough to cause the infinite fall glitch to work. The other thing though, is when the camera pans out when going backwards, you can use strafe controls and then manipulate the control stick to cause Rin to go either uh, forwards, backwards, or wherever you want. But let's have her go backwards. And then she'll just pop up. Again, you cannot do the infinite fall glitch when going backwards. Also, when exiting out of here, you don't want to drop off to the corner over here because this will cause instant death. <laughs> So now that we're done with the villager's basement, let's tackle another basement! In this regards, we're going to talk about the catacombs. Or at least, as much as we can access, given that we already completed the catacombs. So here we are, we can't actually pass through this gate. But there's a way to bypass it. I mean, there is a location in which we can do a phantom rolling glitch to go and access this, but that would take a bit longer to do when we can simply just go ahead and use uh, Sardana's Underworld to access the uh, hidden area. So, all we gotta do, we're just perform a who turn at the stairs here. Now we are, when we're at, the, when the stairs are loaded in, we're kinda st stuck in this uh, uh, area with invisible walls on both sides of the stairs. However, the invisible wall does not extend out this way. So what we're going to do is strafe to the left and then we're going to descend down. Let's tilt it backwards so we can descend down faster. And once we get down far enough, we are then going to roll. There we go. And then we're gonna roll this way. And then we're gonna roll all the way to this area over here, which is basically what is the catacombs from the side of Sardana. So here we can explore to our heart's content of this very small area that is normally inaccessible once you complete the catacombs or even before then because the load screen it would have been over here. However, there is no load screen now since we completed the catacombs. So 
you also cannot go back into the catacombs. I tried to see if I can bypass into here and be able to get still get inside the catacombs, but no, that uh, that level transition is gone now. So, with that being said, uh, we can actually exit out of here by popping up to the mountainside, or we can actually roll up through here. But I do want to point out one other thing is that since we have mountain slopes above us and nothing that's a fat, flat surface, uh, trying to do the infinite fall glitch is a little trickier to do because the game does not like uh, you to do an infinite fall glitch if the surfaces are not flat. So, uh, but we can do it underneath here because that's a flat surface above our head. Now, if we want to, again, leave out of here, we're just going to go over here and perform a phantom rolling glitch right up here to exit out the gate if you wanted to exit out this way. Of course, if the stairs are not available to us because, well, sometimes when you just bypass into here, the stairs are not in here, but we went, we came in here through legitimate means, so the area is loaded, but if it is unloaded, we just simply exit out over here and have Ren pop up with the Phantom Rolling Glitch uh, to getting out over here. Now, if we wanted to explore that hidden area with the Nighttime Sardana Glitch, uh, if the monastery is unloaded, we can just simply strafe left or right to uh, uh, fall down with the Nighttime Glitch activated. But if the monastery is loaded in, we'll just need to pop up here and then make our way outside of the stairs to then drop down, transition it to night, and then while there's a flat surface above us, we are then going to have Ren descend down here with the infinite fall glitch. Of course, if you just happen to pop up out of it, we just got initiated again. And this time, try... There we go. Fall down. It wants to fall down enough. Roll left. And then we just make our way over to here with the nighttime and Zerdana glitch all intact. And there we go. We are able to explore this hidden area with the Nighttime of Sardana glitch. Now, one potential application, if not situational, of this uh, glitch using the Infinite Fall is potentially to get items that have fallen out of bounds. Like this weapon I'm going to be able to acquire here, which was the mace, which I'm pretty sure I dropped somewhere here, and somehow it has fallen out of bounds. So if we tip the control stick forward here, we get close enough, we can use L1 to collect the item. Again, it's situational because you gotta get uh, close proximity and you may not always be able to access it. But I'm just trying to, uh, I had to check later, but I'm pretty sure this is an item that I acquired from the catacombs and dropped before leaving here, but I'm not sure how it fell out of bounds, but it's nice to know that there is at least a potential way to get items that have been otherwise lost to you. All right. We are done talking about basements for now, and let's switch over to talking about BGMs, in which I learned that we can actually stack the Villager's Basement BGM, the uh, Monastery's BGM, as well as the BGM for the uh, Mushroom Caves. All three of them stacked on top of each other. So this will heart to kind of take us back to like episode 13 and 16 respectively that talked about the uh, at getting the BGM of the monastery and the BGM of the uh, mushroom caves out in Serdana. So let's go talk about how we can actually get all three BGMs together. First, we're going to acquire the BGM of the Mushroom Caves because you're dealing with the Outer Limits and Arok, which if you save for last, the Outer Limits may be unfriendly. Then we're going to use the Phantom Rolling Glitch to access the BGM of the Villager's Basement to then use the Outer Limit here to pop Rin up to then we'll be able to access Arok. We will then head off to the Brotherhood of the Eternal World to acquire our last BGM which all we need to do is enter into the temple and then we'll be able to access the third BGM. We're then going to make our way out down over here in which we'll just go ahead and do the same thing that we did earlier. And then we're going to drop down over here because I want to make a nighttime in Sardana. And then we are going to make our way out of here 
And then we have all three BGMs with Nighttime at Zerdana. And now we'll just get on Arak and we'll be able to fly around with all three BGMs while doing a Nighttime at Zerdana. However, the Monk chant may be a bit much. So if you wanted to turn earn, uh, the Monk chant off without turning off the other two BGMs, here's what you gotta do. Make your way over to this alcove here, or any, any alcove like this that we can flip up to and then perform a Who turn to gain, to bypass into the monastery. Of course, we could actually go ahead and go from the top of the mountain, slide down and jump up, but why risk death? You then want to bring Ren down here so that we can have a chance to basically use a phantom rolling glitch. We're going to use this to pop Ren up and activate the phantom rolling glitch. Now we need to make our way outside of the monastery. We are then going to roll up these stairs and then go through the entrance. Now, unlike other buildings, the monastery tends to be rather generous with the loading disc and that we should be able to go through the entrance without worry that it will occur. We are then going to make our way to the catacombs and we're going to bypass through the gate here and this will shut off the chant. Thus, we'll be able to keep the uh, BGM from the mushroom caves and the villagers basement. And since we exited the monastery through a glitch, what we learned in episode 76 part 1 is that if we do so and Arik is having to fly around, we will not be able to call him down. At least not until you exit the building properly, but that's not what I want to focus on here right now. What I want to show you guys is that if you save and load the game, you will actually be able to retain uh, the BGMs. However, uh, though you will reset them to a different part uh, of the BGM, and the BGMs will still loop around each other. So... It's a bit of give or take on saving the game. It's the same thing if you were to exit through a gate and come on back. However, going to Cragmore or any other places that initiate kind of a different uh, music, such as the ba the uh, Sardana March, will reset the whole BGM entirely, as I showed earlier. Now, if we want to acquire the Monk Chant with out losing the ability to interact with Arak, we just need to bypass into here by unofficial means. And then we will make our way over to the gate here because the gate actually, I forgot, when you touch this gate, you will uh, trigger the monk chant. This is probably because when you enter the catacombs, the monk chant disappears, and in order for the monk chant to be activated again, you have to pass through back to the gates and thus ba entering back to the monastery, the monk chant initiates again. But now we'll be able to call Arak because we never entered in the building from the actual entrance we were supposed to do. Speaking of BGM glitches, we have one here with Olak's battle. Aside from Olak suddenly having the roar of a dragon, well mostly due because Arak is off screen right now, if we skip this cutscene, the BGM will initiate, and then if we leave here via Arok, ascending up out of here, we'll actually be able to keep this BGM throughout the entirety of Serdana. This also includes uh, heading off to, like, the Valley of the Fallen, or we're heading off to Cragmore, or if we're heading off to, uh, I don't know, over to Casa Vol. Unlike the other BGMs, this one will stick around. Now, if we wanted to uh, end this BGM, all we got to do is simply either uh, save the game and load the game back, or we can just uh, exit out of the sequence here by just leaving as what we normally should from this battle. Rather it be back here or forward towards where the Blackwing Dragon would normally appear. However, whatever you do, do not exit out of Serdana while this BGM is active, especially when Olak and his lackeys are still uh, gone. They have been deleted, basically. There's nothing to interact with, because when you come back, you run the risk that the BGM will continue on forever. And without the one who caused it to begin with, Olak, you'll be stuck with this BGM 
we're good, which will get annoying when even if you're just shopping, everything becomes like an epic battle struggle. Like deciding between either 11 AP or 8 AP with frost damage. But I digress. I'm going to call this Olax Curse, as you will now forever remember when you hear this battle theme about the greatest highwaymen that ever have crossed the land of Sardana, Olax! Well, that's all I have for episode 76, part 3, and we're done with episode 76 in general now. I am actually pleasantly surprised that after uh, unslimming the video and just being able to elaborate more freely, given that I turned this into a part 3 rather than just something to add and include in episode 77, part 1, that this turned out to be a full-length episode. I am... Quite glad I decided to do this, despite my grievances at the start. Now, with that being said, uh, there is no extra like bonus clip at the end uh, or a meme at the end of this video. As well, I want to go ahead and just jump right to episode 77, part 1. And also, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. So... Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, have a great life, everyone.